MRO Business Models Depending on the business type, aviation MRO business models can be vastly different. The following are the six most common MRO aircraft maintenance business models and facility types that can be found around the world. Independent Repair Stations These are the simplest among the business models found in the MRO world. They can be described as small organizations specialized in specific areas of repair, like airframes or electric systems. However, they may represent a branch of a bigger organization that owns the repair stations. These are usually bigger than the standard independent repair stations and are generally found in the most prominent airports where major airlines have their main hubs. Fixed Space Operators Also known as FBOs, these organizations are always based in one specific airport, hence the name. They usually have close relations with the aviation community of the airport, including local mechanics. They typically add fueling and parking to the services they provide. Commercial Airline Hubs Some people consider this not an MRO business model. The reason is that commercial airlines have these MRO facilities in their major hubs to serve their own fleets only. While there are exceptions, major airlines do not usually offer MRO service to competitors. Since the MRO facilities are usually in the major hub, airlines make sure any plane requiring maintenance repair and overhaul is scheduled to land in the location accordingly to improve the efficiency of their operations. Some regional airlines also own MRO facilities, but the main difference is that regional airlines can distribute them across their whole area of operations since it is a much smaller area compared to the one covered by major national and international airlines. Regional Airline Facilities Getting into more details, Apart from the fact that they operate in smaller airports, the truth is that they are not very different when it comes to the MRO operations they perform and the inspection costs they need to cover. Yet, if we take a closer look at the cost and profits, we will see slightly higher profit margins, tighter infrastructure budgets, and smaller fleets. Therefore, regional airline facilities usually try to be creative when it comes to keeping their cost as low as possible so we can see many of them will break up repairs, dividing them between in-house professionals and subcontractors. Military Facilities While it may sound strange to have military facilities as one of the MRO business models, the fact is that they are at the top of the MRO services providers. Military MRO equipment is usually the most advanced you can find, and the personnel working in these facilities are always well-trained and experienced. These facilities can serve many different types of aircraft, and they generally have a lot of space to house the largest types of aircraft, like enormous cargo airplanes. Their equipment and know-how allow them to inspect, maintain, repair, and overhaul basically everything, from a little helicopter to the most complex jet. In-house corporate facilities some of the biggest corporations in the world need to have their executives fly around the world on a regular basis. Therefore, they prefer to own and operate their own corporate jets. Of course, these jets also require MRO. So some of these corporations also own MRO facilities fully prepared to maintain their fleet operational. Since this is done in-house, their MRO personnel are available whenever they need them. Closing words on MRO In 2019, the International Air Transport Association, IATA, forecasted that the average world citizen traveled once every two years. When the value market in the aviation arena grows, supporting operations in aircraft management organizations like MROs are at a higher cost. Also, in 2019, MRO spending was expected to hit more than $115 billion in just 10 years, according to the aviation consultancy Oliver Wyman. Of course, with the pandemic forcing every airline to ground their whole fleet, this kind of spending took a hit. Fortunately, the flight demand is increasing again, so the number should move back closer to those expected. In fact, North American aftermarket MRO spending is expected to reach $187.6 billion by 2028. 
Given the fact that having in-house MRO capabilities requires an enormous amount of time and capital investment, it is obvious that airlines will continue to choose to work with an external MRO provider. So, MRO professionals can expect to have a brilliant career in the future. However, if you are one of these professionals, you may need to consider that MRO and the services they provide to commercial airlines will evolve as the new generation of aircraft in the whole industry grow together with technological developments like IoT, wearables, augmented reality, AR, artificial intelligence, AI, and many more that seek to take passenger flight to the next level. These may be essential technologies to handle because together with the power of big data, any MRO service provider can use those technologies and data analytics to apply techniques such as condition-based monitoring and maintenance, which will improve the efficiency and effectiveness of MRO operations by making smarter decisions based on the data obtained. In other words, MRO will keep escalating, and it will continue to be essential for the aviation industry. Therefore, as an MRO professional, it is important to start getting used to working with such technologies from now on. To learn more about this and other aviation topics, I invite you to check out the rest of AeroClass courses. I am sure you will find one that suits your needs and that will allow you to keep building your knowledge and developing your skills to launch and escalate your career in the aviation industry. Good luck and see you in the next one.